Hello girls and guys, welcome back to DSF. My name is Logan and here today we have the all new JQ Omoda. Yes, not Cherry Omoda, JQ Omoda C9. Now, we are, if you are slightly confused about why this is under JQ and not Cherry, you need to remember that O and J, Omoda and Cherry, is actually a part of the Cherry umbrella overseas. So perhaps the brand might be trying to do something like that here. So right off the bat, let's see why I think this car, the JQ Omoda C9, is one of the most unique offerings that China has given us in the past two or three years or so. Starting with the front right here, you've got your Omoda lettering behind the black um, background here with some patterns going on here for your LED DRLs, a light bar that runs the length of the front which is mimicked in the rear and these very sharp but unique looking LED DRLs. Now this is a somewhat French design in my opinion but let me know if you guys see it or not too. Other than that, you'll notice that the front splitter here looks very aggressive which is not really something one would expect from a D-segment family SUV. But why it makes sense here is under the hood, you actually have a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that makes 257 horsepower and 400 newton meters of torque. Yes, it is plenty powerful. You'll never want for more power Excuse me. in this car. Another unique design is this diamond-shaped pattern on the front grille, which you'll notice is closed off towards the sides, but actually is open here, which helps with aerodynamics and, of course, cooling. So that should sum up the front of the Jeku Omoda C9. Let's take a look at the sides the rear and then we'll take you inside as well. All right, so off to the side of this car, you'll notice immediately that there are some muscular haunches and this very premium element going on right here, which is actually technically mimicked down there as well. You've also got these massive 20 inch Michelin wheels, 245 by 50 profiles, as well as these two-tone alloy covers which cover mostly the entire wheel but then again that is very typical of premium cars as well isn't it and then these very chunky wing mirrors over here with your signal indicator and not one but two separate cameras as well denoting the ADAS features and the premiumness of this off-road SUV so that should conclude roughly the side you can also notice this very sloping it's not very dramatic, right, the slope at the back here. It gets more dramatic in the rear. You'll notice these black parts here that blend in with the grey parts. That is actually very nice. It's a nice feature as well to have. And this highlights the fact that this SUV, D-segment SUV, is in fact a coupe D-segment SUV. Now, let's check out the rear. And here we have it. So like I mentioned, there is a white and a black model as well, right? So in addition to the grey, these are two of the other colours you can get. Now, from the rear, Again, you'll notice from the side, the coupe profile wasn't as dramatic. It wasn't curving as much. Here, it is far more pronounced and you can see it juts out a lot more from this angle. You've also got like a glass uh, background for this metallic Omoda wording here, which helps it pop out a bit more. You've got a decent sized rear window and these very unique looking uh, brake lights at the back here. And of course, a light bar that runs the length of the tail light. So not only do you have these patterns going on here, then one straight LED bar, Omoda, and of course you also get quad exhaust pipes, which is a very sporty feature and not really something you'd expect from a D-segment family SUV. But of course, like I mentioned, this car has all the power you need and then some. So you've also got your reverse cameras and all here with an automated tailgate. And as you can see with the tonneau cover down, there is massive amounts of space now being an suv obviously this is a little bit higher off the ground so if you wanted to lift heavier items into here it may present a slight challenge but other than that i think it's pretty much what you'd expect from a d segment family suv you can even pull out your tonneau cover right to store your tissue boxes or whatever up here and then you'll notice that there's slightly less space but it's still very very usable very practical and the rear seats are just as practical as the booth and of course you've got tire repair kit here under the false floor your jack and so on and a full-size spare wheel as well which i personally prefer over run flats so there you have it the exterior of the jku omoda c9 let's check out the inside you can clearly see that the interior is probably the nicest um well, the nicest place in this car, but also one of the nicest and most unique premium interiors of any Chinese car that has come out in Malaysia over the past, say, two or three years. Because right off the bat, you start with this massive 
panoramic sunroof up here with the controls right here and you can see that with it open it's very very bright and airy in here so it never feels dark and dingy despite the black leather which again i like black because simply because it just won't get dirty as easily the diamond quilting also helps other than that it's a pretty standard but very simple and also premium affair because you've got some nice wood here You've got even more wood here in a slightly different color, but it's all glossy and polished, so it looks very, very premium. You've got your twin setup right here for your infotainment, as well as your digital driver display, both of which are just about the right size for me. And you've got a camera on your steering wheel. It's very hard to miss. So this little camera, it kind of monitors your alertness levels to make sure that you're always at your peak while driving. You've also got a nice long vanity mirror with a light right here which you can neatly fold away when you don't want this four spoke steering wheel which is technically a two spoke steering wheel with a very unique shape which is also flat bottom with paddle shifters and then you've got your rotary dials here for your modes and so on switches for your controls a nice storage space over here with two cup holders with the wireless charging and a very deep cubby space right there you can store this away when you don't want plus like a certain german brand You've got your seat controls right here at the side. And as you can see, memory one, two, three, there's three settings for the seat, right? Well, there's three more in the infotainment. So there's six seat profiles that you can choose in total. And of course, in addition to the very premium, very upscale interior, you've also got Sony speakers. Look over there. So not only will you be wafting along in luxury, you'll be doing it with the most premium sound experience as well and before we conclude the front and move into the rear seats i want you all to very quickly zoom in and take a look right here at my hand so where would the door handle be where do you think it would be it's nowhere here it's nowhere here it's nowhere here there's nothing to click here or pull or perhaps it's this button nope it's not it's actually this thing right here put your fingers in pull it up the door opens unique right Okay, so the panoramic sunroof stretches all the way back here, which is very nice. Once again, you have, okay, some cup holders here on your armrest, which is very easy to pull out, which I like. For some cars, they make it a little bit difficult. Your quilting is continued back here. You have nice little headrest thingies here. And by the way, I forgot to mention the front, the driver's side headrest actually has two out of the 14 speakers in this car. Speaking of speakers, uh, right here off to the side. Very unique pattern. You can see it in the door right there with your seat adjustments as well. Same way to open the door. Central air con vent right here. This is a bit more unique. Normally they'd have two or they'd have like something like this and then, you know, some buttons down here. But this is a bunch of clicky clicky switches, which is nice. Very small storage space back here. That's a very different thing, I guess. But then again, no one really uses these as far as I know. So yeah, that just about sums up the front, the rear. You've got your cup holders here, by the way. You can see them in the door card over there. And of course, Isofix mounts for your child seat. And just so you guys know, the driver's seat is now slightly behind my driving position. And I actually still have crazy amounts of leg room and very good headroom. You can see more than a whole fistful, nearly, well, two whole fistfuls actually. So. That just about sums up how practical and how fun this car will probably be. We don't know how it drives just yet. And of course, again, estimated price is $185,000 for the two-wheel drive and $195,000 for the four-wheel drive version. But stay tuned for the launch where the official price will be announced. So this is the Jayku Omoda C9. I've been Logan. Thank you so much for watching DSF. We hope you enjoyed.